Hey everybody and welcome to episode 195 of the Daily Dose of Drupal. I am Adam and today we're going to be looking at a module suggested by the um, creator of the module, Roman Pasca, or on Drupal at Terran2L. And that module he maintains is called Range. So what this module does is it is a pretty simple module that attaches to CCK and allows you to add a field for two different numbers, so a range. So I'm going to sh showcase that here in a second and give you a few examples of some use cases that would work with range module. But before we do that, of course, we need to head over to CodeKarate.com and make sure to check out everything that's going on there. Um, we just finished up our contest, so if you did enter the contest for our free Drupal Commerce course, make sure to check your email, um, see if you won, or get, get a discount code. Um, also, while you're on Code Karate, make sure to sign up to get the Five Secrets ebook, and also just check out anything else you see on the site we always love to hear feedback from you so let us know also like Roman did make sure to tell us any modules you might want us to check out so let's get started so the range module so the range module is like I mentioned before a module that's gonna allow you to do two different um, fields or two different numbers on the same CCK field so you can read through it here um, there's not a lot of setup but it obviously does have a lot of functionality actually built into the module so what um, the version I'm using is um, 7.13 here. Obviously, it does have an alpha version for Drupal 8, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you're looking to get ahead and do a Drupal 8 site, you could use this module if needed. Um, so make sure, that, again, that if you are following the video that you're using 1.3, otherwise there might be some differences that uh, aren't going to be covered in this video. So let's go ahead and get that module installed. So once we'll hop over to our site here. And we're going to hop over to the modules page and make sure we turn the module on. If you scroll down a little ways. You'll see there's a f module here. It's going to fall into the fields, field set, and called numeric range. There's nothing to configure on it, but make sure you just go ahead and turn it on and save the configuration. So once you have the configuration saved, that's really all you need to do. Now when you go over to your content types, so under structure, content types, you can now add this as an option or a field. So I'm going to go in to manage my fields on a houses um, content type that I created earlier. And you'll see that I already have one in here. And I wanted to get one in here so I can kind of walk you through it. And then we can add another one as well. So one use case that um, I came up with is if you wanted to have potential users or realtors um, enter in specifics for houses that they might want or want to sell. So for example, you could say for bedrooms. I went in and said, okay, give me your lowest number of bedrooms and your highest number of bedrooms that you would allow me to have or allow, or you would want to sell. So you can enter that. You could also, and we're going to add another field here for price or bathrooms or things of that nature. Another example would be is if you had a consulting company, um, and especially in website development, and you wanted to give your clients a range of uh, fees. So you want to say how how much are you willing to spend? Give us a range from zero to ten or whatever they think is comfortable for them. So what uh, we'll do is here. Let's add another range field. So we're gonna do price. And then again in the drop down here, you'll see there's three different ones that come along. There's a decimal, a float range, and an integer range. So you're probably familiar with what a decimal range and a float or excuse me, an integer range is, but you're probably not too familiar with what a float range is. And to be honest with you, either was I. But when I looked it up, the basically the main difference is, is float stores data a lot and takes up a lot less space than a decimal does. Um, I believe we found out about 20 times less, which is pretty significant. But the caveat is, is float, when it stores numbers, it's done as accurate. Basically it can, it changes, it can change a rounding issue. So for example, if you're using money as a range, you don't want to use float because you want to be specific on the amount. If you're using, for example, I don't know, height or distance to the, the sun, you might be able to use a decimal value there because it doesn't have to be as accurate. So for this example, we were doing price, so I'm just going to do decimal because I want it to be pretty accurate. I don't care if it takes up a little more storage. And then here we go. So there's some settings that we can specify on the range for decimal. And it says precision. It says total number of digits to store in the database. So we can store up to 10 digits is the least and up to 32 is the most. So 
we're gonna keep it at 10. So we're gonna store out to 10 full length. Anything over that will get dropped. And then the number of digits to the right of the decimal, we only want it to be two. So keep it there. And then we can say, what's our decimal marker? We want it to be a decimal point, not a comma. And then again, this is gonna look very similar to any other CCK field you've looked at. There's just a bunch of different configurations. It's at minimums, maximums. You can do a field prefix, which is what I want to do, so I'm going to give a dollar sign on that, so before. And then again, here's, here's some other additional ones for your range, so you have your from and your to. So you can say, I'm going to change this to say minimum price, I'm going to change the to to say maximum price. And again, you can add prefix and suffixes as well. I will, I'll add a suffix of you know, just a colon. Sounds good. And then again, if you want default values, again, a lot of this is going to look pretty familiar, but let's go ahead and save our settings. And now that's added. And if we go and add content to our houses, we just scroll down here, you'll see that now we have a minimum price of, we can set there, and I actually put the suffix right there, so that doesn't look really good, so I'd probably want to get rid of that, but that's where that would appear. So I can set the minimum price of say 50,000, whoops, maximum price of 125,000. And again, I could go to decimal values if I wanted, but I won't for this example. And for bedrooms, let's say I want zero to three. We're just gonna give it a title. We'll go ahead and save this. And then you'll see here, it adds the decimal value for me. So it goes out to that zero, zero. So again, this isn't as relevant since on that larger purchase, it probably doesn't need a decimal value, but you see how that works. Um, and then, but just again, displays that, but we can get rid of those semicolons since that doesn't really make any sense there, but you can see how that works. So anyway, that's, that's pretty much the range module. Again, there's three different options. There was the decimal, which we showed you, the float, and then the integer. So those are your options to input in, and there's probably a lot more examples than those ones that I came up with, but needless to say, um, it's not a module you're gonna use every day or on every site, but it definitely is a module that will save you some time if this range issue needs to come up. So again, guys, make sure that you um, go ahead and thank Taryn 2 l for the module um, and all the other ones that he looks like he's supported and committed to. So that's awesome. Thanks again for recommending it, Roman. Um, other than that, make sure to check out codekarate.com again and check out our ebook there and also our course and anything else that might interest you as well. Um, we'd love to hear about feedback as well. So until next time, guys, see ya.